So hello everyone, so welcome on, uh, well, moving on to video number two now. Um, I just want to, this is a video where I'm going to be talking you through two recipes I've tried lately. Um, now, um, I did tell you, I did say in a previous video that I was going to tell you about my recent trip to Brighton. Um, I, there's not really much to say about that, um, because we were going to go to a museum, but the museum, we did go there, um, the museum was in Hove, but it was really disappointing. Um, it was a free museum, but it didn't look anywhere near as good as on the website, so that was disappointing. But our trip was still good though, because we just went back to Brighton, and I visited Infinity Foods. Every time I go to Brighton, I have to go to Infinity Foods, because it's amazing. I spend like all day there. It's sort of like a health food kind of shop, um, so everything I sell is kind of health food. It's kind of, I think it's mainly vegan, um, vegan, vegetarian. Um, yeah, and I just love it. Um, lots of sort of alternative stuff there you can't get anywhere else. Um, I got, um, I came back with a massive haul, <laughs> including some new naked bars that I highly recommend, naked fruit and nut bars, um, coffee and walnut. Um, I got about six bars, I've eaten them all up now. They're yeah, probably one of the nicest naked bars I've, I've had. Um, because they, 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 they have coffee in them and it's not just flavouring, it's actual coffee in there. And they really do have a, um, a nice coffee taste. Um, unfortunately I haven't been able to find them anywhere other than Infinity Foods at the moment. I guess because they're a new thing and maybe they're just trialling them at Infinity Foods to see if people like them. So I really hope they introduce them elsewhere because I haven't yet seen them in Holland and Barrett or anywhere else. Um, so I'm not going to show you everything I bought there because it was quite a lot. It was mainly just lots of cereals and I could show them as and when I use them. But um, one of the things I bought, which I can show you now, is this um, polenta. Um, by, um, I hope you can see it. Polenta. Um, now, polenta is very popular in Italy, uh, which is where they often, they often make uh, cakes out of polenta over there um, and things like that. Um, it's also known, I mean, polenta is kind of like, yeah, I guess, well... <laughs> It's a sort of like, um, more, I don't know, sort of a gourmet way of describing it, I guess. Um, cause you, cause the other name for it is really just like cornmeal. Cornmeal is essentially polenta by another name. Um, so it's, it's a lovely kind of, um, golden, uh, colour. Um, sort of golden, sort of granular, it looks like sort of gold flower in colour. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful sort of alchemy as you watch this gold flower thickening in a pan and becoming increasingly beige in colour and then it, it, it thickens and it turns into this lovely porridge. That's, that's how I used it, I, I made a porridge out of it. Because they also eat cornmeal or polenta in, um, in Jamaica, although over, in Jamaica it's um, called cornmeal. Um, in Jamaica and in the wider Caribbean they make um, cornmeal porridge, it's very popular over there. So I found this recipe online for cornmeal porridge and that's what I did. Um, so cornmeal porridge, so what I did, and I had this for breakfast today as well, it's not something I'd have every day and it does take quite a long time to make because this is an instant polenta I got for coarse polenta. If you, get, if you use instant polenta that's dead quick, that would only take you about like five minutes but I don't think it would taste as nice. This is obviously more expensive but it is worth it I think. Um, so yeah, so it's whole grain, um, and you know, it ticks all the boxes really, you know, if you're on any, any diet, if you, you know, you're gluten free, anything like that, you can eat this as well. So, you know, it, it's pretty much anyone can eat this really. Um, so yeah, it's very good for that. Um, so anyhow, so what I did was, um, first of all, you bring water to the boil. I used, um, initially I used about 300 mils of water, but the key is to keep topping it up a bit like making a risotto because you don't want it to dry out. So I brought that water to the boil and then I gradually added the polenta and, you, and the key is to keep on stirring. You have to keep on stirring as you're adding the polenta because you don't want it to stick and also that will help prevent any lumps. It doesn't matter if any lumps do appear, but that just, you know, it depends on preference really. I personally don't mind if there's a few lumps in it, but for, 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 for stirring it, you know, it would help to prevent that. Um, you bet you so uh, yeah, so you bring the water to a boil, you reduce to a simmer, so I should have mentioned that. So you reduce it to a simmer before you add the polenta and then you pour it in steadily, stirring constantly. You continue to stir until the polenta is thickened. Now you should cook this for approximately 30 minutes because this is, as I say, it is an instant polenta. The one I've got here, you need to cook it for about 30 minutes. You don't have to stir it all the time. You can go away and do other things, you know, make coffee or what have you, but 
it's um, important to stir it regularly because you don't want it to stick and you, it's also important to top it up with water now and again you know just keep an eye on it and if it looks like it's drying out add some more add some water people have different preferences that's how fit they like it i i like it a little bit looser so i i top it up with water throughout the cooking process i also added uh coconut milk as well so um i added a bit of coconut coconut milk along with the water at the beginning but i um held back half of the coconut milk and added the rest at the end because that because as you're cooking with the coconut milk some of there can be some flavour depletion so I added some more coconut milk at the end just so I could still taste the flavour. Because they have coconut milk in the in um this in the in the Jamaican porridge, Jamaican corn meal. Um also for Jamaican corn meal the other key ingredients that I used um is cinnamon. You could either use a cinnamon stick or you could just use um, a pinch of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. Um, I added a bay leaf, which you remove at the end, that's just for flavour. A drop of vanilla essence. Vanilla essence is key. Any Jamaican porridge worth its salt needs vanilla essence. Um, a little bit of allspice, that's optional, but just makes it a little bit more spicy. Um, as I say, the coconut milk is, you have to add that. If you're doing Jamaican porridge proper style, you need coconut milk. Um, at the um, end, now this is optional, but in this recipe I was following it, um, it, it suggested it, and I wanted to just follow the recipe so I actually went and got some um, condensed milk I don't actually really like condensed milk so I'm not going to get that one again um, it's okay and it, it certainly sweetens it up a bit but you only need a really small amount it looks like really really thick custard and it is really 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 sweet um, and like I say you only need a small amount to thicken it or sorry not thicken it sweeten it and I did that right at the end but um, it's not something I'm going to buy again it's just I needed to follow the recipe and because the recipe said condensed milk and I think that's something they they use in Jamaica as well so I just wanted to be authentic and just at least try it so now I've got that on my system but you don't have to add condensed milk um, and also at the very end I added a dusting of um, nutmeg a very small amount because nutmeg is very potent you only need a pinch of that substance um, just scatter that over the top and I also, to be um, authentic, I also added some mango because that's classic in Jamaican cuisine. You don't have to add the mango. When I made it the other day, I didn't have a mango. But today I decided to add mango. I can't cut a mango for the life of me, but luckily at um, Waitrose and I think other supermarkets, they tend to sell mango ready chopped, which is great. You know, just in a little pot, one portion, which is great. And also the mango in a little portion is always nice and ripe. So I actually think I prefer it anyway for taste. So you just, I just added that and that was lovely. So that's the polenta anyway. The other thing I've tried recently, I got this in um, Arundel, and this here is um, it's Freaka. It's called Freaka. I don't know if any of you have tried this. Um, it's a newfangled kind of grain. I mean, it's not newfangled. It's, I mean, this has been around for, like, uh, centuries. But it's newfangled in a sense that I don't think many people in the UK have really tried it until quite recently. Many people haven't tried it at all because it's only just emerged, really, in the shops, you know. Um, it's part of this sort of interest in Middle Eastern cuisine. Um, I think it's his name, Ottolenghi. Uh, um, yeah, Ottolenghi, I think that's right. Yeah, this well known um, Middle Eastern chef. I think it's been kind of like pop popularising Middle Eastern cuisine. Um, yeah, Frico, anyway. The company was Zaytun from Palestine. Um, that's where it comes from, came from. Um, and uh, what Frico is. Um, it's basically wheat, okay, but it's a very special type of wheat. It's wheat that is harvested while it is still green, so it's really, really young baby wheat. And um, because it's unripe, it actually has more nutrients in it than regular wheat. It's an ancient grain, as I say, they've been eating this for centuries in the Middle East and parts of the Mediterranean as well. Um, and after it's been harvested while it's still green, it's roasted on an open fire, and it's then rubbed. And that and rub and it and, that, and farik means to rub. So farika literally means to rub in Arabic. Um, to remove the husk and reveal an aromatic grain packed with protein and fibre. Um, it's very easy to use. You can use it in dishes such as pilaf, risotto, and salad. You can use it instead of rice or pasta, just like you would any other grain. You can add it to so You can add it to soup. Now the recipe I did was actually on the back of here. Um, farika and leek pilaf with toasted almonds. Um, it was for four people, so obviously I cut it down. I used um, about 63 grams of Frika for one person, so that's just that's between two and three ounces, which is about right. So what you do, anyhow, so you put some olive oil um, into a large heavy base pot, you add leeks that have been sliced, and you soften them for 10 to 15 minutes, stirring occasionally. You rinse the Frika, and then you add that to the leeks, 
along with a stock. Um, for one, it says here 400 mils of vegetable stock, obviously that's for four people. So I used, I think I used about 200 mils, because 100 mil was not quite enough, um, and you don't want it to stick, so I did 200 mils. Um, but I think I had, I topped it up a bit like a risotto, because it dried out a bit, and then you just add a bit more water, just like you do for polenta. So you start out with a small amount of water, and then you can top it up. Um, it's best not to add, it's better to add a small amount at the beginning, and then you can see how much you need, instead of adding too much, and then you're like, whoa, and then it'll take forever for it to cook down. Um, so yeah, so you went to Frika, you got to, I've already said that, haven't I? Yes, you, you went to Gafrika and you add galeeks along with the stock and thyme, so you can use a bit of thyme, but that's optional I think. I didn't actually use thyme because I didn't have any, I used dried oregano instead and that was nice. You bring to a simmer and then you cover and you cook over a low heat, stirring from time to time for 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, so this would take about the same amount of time, you know, as if you're doing a rice pilaf. Well, maybe slightly longer actually, because rice pilafs often take a bit less, but not much longer. Or until the liquid is absorbed, and then take off the heat and let it stand. Now again, you heat some more olive oil in a frying pan um, until hot, and then you add almonds, um, chopped, roughly chopped almonds, and you toast until lightly coloured. You lower the heat and then you add some sliced garlic to soften for a few minutes. Now garlic is very, very potent, so go steady on that. Um, it can be, whew, sometimes garlic, depending on what clove you have, some of it will be very potent, so just a little goes a long way, I found. <laughs> I think I added a bit too much. Um, then you toss the frico and leek mixture with mint, so it's also got mint in here, so you chop some fresh mint, just a little bit of fat, and some lemon zest and juice, um, so, make, so like a quarter of a lemon for one person, um, and a juice of quarter of a lemon. So add that to the frequent leek mixture and season taste with pepper. And then you top with the toasted almond garlic mix and serve. So that's what I did. And also, this is optional, but you can also add some feta cheese. I certainly think that um, adding feta cheese really transformed it because otherwise it might not be filling enough. But that can also be used as a side for meat or fish dishes if you eat meat or fish as well. So it's very, very versatile and frequent is very worth a try. It is, I have to say, very expensive, however. Um, it's not cheap, this stuff. I think I spent about 3 50 for that. In Holland about, we can be talking as much as £8. So avoid Holland about, I'm certainly not spending £8 on a grain. That's too much for me. Um, I'm not, you know... I, wouldn't, I don't think I could justify that. I think £4 my cap on something like this. And you can get it for £4, I think, in a grape vine, is it grape vine or grape, no the grape tree which is another healthy job, so again it's not cheap but that would still serve you up four meals you know so yeah it's not cheap but you know it's all relative isn't it you know meat and fish can cost that amount anyway and this does give you four meals so you know I don't eat meat or I don't really eat meat so you know I can maybe I can splash out a bit more on expensive grains now and again because that is my meat <laughs> so yes but as I say it's worth a try. Um, oh yes, I just wanted to mention as well um, that, um, do any of you like Bob Marley? I really like Bob Marley because I like um, that type of music. What happened was, I mean I like Bob Marley anyway, but um, I hadn't listened to any of his music for quite some time, but I was watching this, um, no listening, sorry, it was on Radio 4, it was a programme about porridge, and um, they played this Bob, the Bob Marley song on it, um, No Woman No Cry, as they were making um, Jamaican cornmeal, which is what inspired me to make Jamaican cornmeal using this. Um, and they played No Woman No Cry, and in that song, there's actually a lyric in there about cornmeal porridge. So again, of course, having heard the song, I was like, I have to go and buy this now, so I went and bought this. And now every time I make um, <laughs> the, um, this, this um, cornmeal porridge, I, um, I play this CD, which has got all the main classic Bob Marley songs on there, but No Woman No Cry is really good. So yeah, I like playing that. Um, just thought I'd tell you that. Oh yeah, just before I finish, um, you did ask me one question, it was a viewer question, I've got a few on my list, so I will try and get around to answering them all in time. But one of the questions was, what is my favourite spice? Now that's a difficult question, because I like all spices, but I think the, the spice I use most often is probably cinnamon. Um, now, uh, I, I mean, as I say, I use them all though, I mean, I like cardamom, cardamom's very nice, nutmeg can be nice, um, cloves, um, all of them. Yeah, I think I prefer the sweeter spices to the hotter spices. I'm not so keen on, like, chilli. I do use chilli, but only in a really small amount because I'm not great on, like, chilli, really. And the same goes with cayenne pepper. I've only a very small amount. So, yeah, I prefer the sweeter, warmer spices. And I think I'll say cinnamon is probably top of the list. Um, garlic doesn't count as a spice. It's an aromatic. But I'm going to say, although it's not technically a spice, it's an aromatic. Um, it's used to flavour food, though, so I think you could probably put it in a similar category. Uh, I do use a lot of garlic, <laughs> so maybe don't come near me if you don't like garlic breath. Um, I do eat a lot of garlic. We're talking on average two to three cloves a day, so and sometimes I eat it semi-raw. 
um, which isn't always good because sometimes, I, I do like the taste of garlic, as I said, closely very, like I said, when I was having that uh, frica and I added a bit too much garlic and one of the